OK, so let's take a look at what's actually in the studio before we uh, start to discuss connections. Here we have the Nord Wave, which I bought because it has sample playback capabilities, and I wanted it specifically for playback samples of the Eminent 310U, which is really one of Jean-Michel Jarre's trademark sounds. The sample playback is on one oscillator, and then you can then mix that with normal synth sounds on the other oscillator to create some unique sounds. This is the Electribe SX, which is pretty much just a drum and groove machine. I just use it as a drum machine though. I originally wanted this so I could get sample sets of all the classic drum machines, such as the Roland TR-808, Lynn and Simmons drum kits, and of course Jean-Michel Jarre's favourite, the Cold Mini Pop 7. Moving on, we have the Behringer Zenix 802 mixer. Now you can see on the left hand side, there's two inputs there. That is the inputs from all the instruments combined. And then on the right hand side, those two inputs are just from the Electribe. Beside that is the Eridol UM3EX MIDI interface, of which I use three. Uh, this is the master unit, and I have two others connected, and this gives me nine parts in total, each with in and out MIDI connections. This is a Novation Supernova 2, probably the last great synth that Novation actually made back in the late 90s. It's got a lot of good virtual analog sounds in there, and definitely the best keyboard action of all my gear. Above the Supernova we have the Access Virus TI2, which is probably the most versatile virtual analog synth available, and is 16 part multi tambral Resting on the virus is a synth module I bought back in 1999, the QuasiMIDI Polymorph. This is a really superb synth to have if you wanted to make music like Kraftwerk, Tangerine Dream or Klaus Schultz, who incidentally owns 7 or 8 of these. It's four part multi tambral it's got lots of waveforms to choose from, and each part has its own 16 step sequencer, which can be run at different clock rates. So that's very flexible, it's very easy to use. Next is the Korg Radius, which I think is a very underrated synth. Again, this is a four part multi tambral synth, and it's got a whole host of uh, really cool built in effects. Finally, we have the Moog Voyager Select, which in my particular case is a Cherry Solar Edition. This is my only true piece of analog equipment in the studio. Now, when I first got this synth, for the first two or three days when I bought it, I was pretty unimpressed, and I even thought of returning it for a refund, but to be honest, I'm, I'm glad I didn't. The sound by itself I find kind of dry and a bit boring, so I upped it up to the, um, the Lexicon MX400 effects processor for a bit of reverb and delay, and now the thing just really does springs to life. It is truly an awesome instrument to own. So how do we get all this into Cubase? Let's look at the audio signal first. All of the instruments, with the exception of the Electribe, are connected to this 8-way line mixer, the Behringer Eurorack Pro RX1602. This basically just combines all the sounds into one stereo signal, which is fed into the smaller Zenix 802 mixer. From here, you can see the two wires which take the signal into the PC via the sound card's lining connection. You do however need a good sound card, and I use one of the Creative X5 cards, which gives a latency of around 5 or 10 milliseconds, so there's really no obvious lag between pressing the key and hearing the sound triggered uh, on the synth. OK, now let's take a look at the MIDI part. This really is pretty simple. As I mentioned previously, there are three Eridol UM3X MIDI interfaces. This gives me nine parts in total, each with an in and an out MIDI connection. Each part also has 16 MIDI channels, and so for example on the Polymore, which is four part multi tambral, that allows you to control each of the four parts on its own MIDI channel, all from one part. The only exception to this is the virus, which connects directly to the PC via USB. Once in Cubase, all the instruments can be assigned to their appropriate MIDI in out channels. They can be renamed as well so you don't have to remember which synths are assigned to which particular MIDI part. For instance, with the Voyager, I've called the MIDI in and out parts from Voyager and to Voyager. You can also do the same thing for the Electribe using the Drum Map Editor. So, as you can see, it really is quite simple to set up a studio like this. It's not as difficult as what a lot of people actually think. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and it's perhaps been of some help if you've been wondering how to connect a studio like this. 
and uh, I'll see you soon with a new track called uh, First Light. <laughs>